Another method of symbolizing categorical propositions is the use of the Venn diagram. John Venn, who introduced the method, thus the name Venn diagram, used two overlapping circles to represent the relationship between two classes. Consider these diagrams. The shaded portion represents a class that has no members, while the area with an X signifies that the class has at least one member. Generally, this is what a Venn diagram looks like. Where this is read as S but not P, and this represents the class of things that are part of S but are not part of P. And this is read as not S but P. And this represents the class of things that are part of P but are not part of S. And this is read as S but P. And this represents the class of things that are both parts of S and P. Now, let's discuss the Venn diagrams that are used to represent the four standard types of categorical propositions. Here is the Venn diagram for universal affirmative A propositions. The shaded area of this Venn diagram represents a class that has no members. Thus, in the Venn diagram for a universal affirmative A proposition, the area S but not P is shaded to indicate that all members of S are members of P. Thus, we say, all S are P. Next is the Venn diagram for universal negative E propositions. The shaded area of this Venn diagram represents a class that has no members. Thus, in the Venn diagram for a universal negative E proposition, the area S but P is shaded to indicate that this class has no members. Thus, we say, no S are P. Then we have a Venn diagram for particular affirmative I propositions. A particular affirmative I proposition asserts that there is at least one member of S that is a member of P. This is diagrammed by placing an X in the area S but P, which is common to the two classes. Thus, in the diagram, we place an X in the area S but P, and we say, some S are P. Now, here is the Venn diagram for particular negative O propositions. And so, a particular negative O proposition asserts that there is at least one member of S that is not a member of P. Thus, in this diagram, we place the X on the area S but not P to indicate that, indeed, there is at least one member of S that is not a member of P. Thus, we can say, some S are not P. Now, in traditional or Aristotelian logic, one assumes that universal affirmative A and universal negative E propositions have existential import. Thus, in the example, all angels are holy, one assumes that there are angels and that all of them are holy. However, 
In applying the Venn diagram, one does not make this assumption. In the Venn diagram, all angels are said to be holy only if there are indeed angels. But the Venn diagram for a universal affirmative A proposition does not contain an area in which there is a symbol to show that there is an angel. Hence, the propositions all angels are holy or no angels are holy are non-existential propositions. In the first place, there are no angels in reality. This Venn diagram demonstrates this point. As we can see, both application of traditional rules and use of the Venn diagram presuppose that only particular affirmative I and particular negative O propositions have existential import. Thus, a Venn diagram for the particular affirmative I proposition, some angels are holy, contains an X to show that there is at least one angel that is holy. And this is how the Venn diagram looks like. A Venn diagram can be used to show the validity of categorical syllogisms. Three intersecting circles are needed to diagram a categorical syllogism. One circle for each class. The following rules will be observed in testing the validity of syllogism using a Venn diagram. Rule number one. The universal premise should be diagrammed first if the argument also contains a particular premise. Rule number two. The letter X should be placed on the line dissecting an area if the whole area is so designated in the premise. Rule number three. Only the premises should be diagrammed. And rule number four, if the conclusion is self-evident in the diagram, then the argument or syllogism is valid. Let us consider this example, which is already in its standard form. All M are P. All S are M. So, all S are P. Now, how do we determine the validity of this syllogism using a Venn diagram? Well, first, we need to draw three intersecting circles, that is, circles for S, P, and M, and then number the areas by starting at the center and then clockwise. Now that we have drawn three intersecting circles, each for S, P, and M, our next task is to diagram the syllogism. Let us start with the first premise, that is, all M are P. It must be noted that since the premise talks about the circles for M and P only, so we will imagine that the circle S does not exist. Hence, we will diagram M and P only. Now, since the premise says all M are P, that is, all members of M are members of P, then we will shade areas 5 and 6 to show that all members of M, which are areas 1 and 4, are part of P. The Venn diagram of the syllogism now looks like this. After we diagram the first premise, let us proceed to diagram the second premise, which reads, All S are M. This time, the premise talks about S and M only, so we will imagine that the circle for P does not exist. Now, since the premise says, All S are M, that is, all members of S are members of M, 
then we will shade areas 7 and 2 to show that indeed all members of S, which is area 1, are part of M. Now the diagram looks like this. Since the Venn diagram of the syllogism is now complete, let us proceed to analyze the diagram to determine whether the syllogism is valid or invalid. As rule number three says, we diagram only the premises. Hence, we do not diagram the conclusion. And as rule number four says, the argument or syllogism is valid if the conclusion is self-evident in the Venn diagram. Now the conclusion says, all S are P. As we can see in the Venn diagram of the syllogism, this conclusion, all S are P, is perfectly diagrammed. That is, it is self-evident. In fact, since areas 2, 6, and 7 are shaded, then they do not exist anymore. What is left now of the class S is area 1, which all belongs to P. Thus, this syllogism is valid. Let us consider another example. Some M are P. All M are S. So, some S are P. And so, let us draw three intersecting circles for this syllogism, each for S, M, and P, and then number the areas by starting at the center and then clockwise. As rule number one says, we will diagram first the universal premise if the syllogism also contains a particular premise. Since the first premise in the syllogism is particular, while the second premise is universal, then we will diagram first the second premise, that is, all M are S. The second premise says, all M are S. So we will shade areas 4 and 5 to show that all members of M, which are areas 1 and 6, are part of S. And so the Venn diagram of the syllogism will now look like this. Now let us proceed to diagram the second premise, which says, Sum M are P. Since this is a particular proposition, then we will not use the shading method. Instead, we will place an X on the designated area. Since the premise says, some M are P, and since area 4 is already shaded, then it does not exist anymore. Thus, we will place the X on the area 1 to show that, indeed, there is at least one member of M that is, a member of B. The Venn diagram of the syllogism now looks like this. Now that the Venn diagram of the syllogism is complete, let us proceed to determine its validity. And so, again, rule number three says, we diagram only the premises. Hence, we do not diagram the conclusion. And as rule number four says, the argument or the syllogism is valid if the conclusion is self-evident in the Venn diagram. Now, the conclusion of the syllogism says, some S are P. And if we look at the Venn diagram, there is an X on area 1 which indicates that there is at least one member of S that is a member of P. Hence, the conclusion which reads, some S are P, is perfectly diagrammed in the Venn diagram. Indeed, the conclusion is self-evident, therefore, the syllogism is valid. Here's another example. 
Some M are P. All S are M. So some S are P. Let us draw three intersecting circles for this syllogism, each for S, M, and P, and then number the areas by starting at the center and then clockwise. As we already know, we will diagram the universal premise first, which is all S are M. Thus, the Venn diagram of the syllogism now looks like this. Then let us diagram the second premise which says, some M are P. Since areas 1 and 4 are so designated in the premise, then we will place the X on the line that dissects areas 1 and 4 to show that the whole area is so designated. Hence the Venn diagram of this syllogism now looks like this. Since the X is on the line that dissects areas 1 and 4, this gives us an inconclusive reading of the conclusion. For this reason, this syllogism is invalid. Indeed, the conclusion is not self-evident. It is not perfectly diagrammed. Let us analyze one more example. All M are P. No S are M. So, no S are P. Again, let us draw three intersecting circles for this syllogism, each for S, M, and P, and then number the areas by starting at the center and then clockwise. Now, let us first diagram the first premise, which reads, All M are P. The Venn diagram of the syllogism now looks like this. Then, let us diagram the second premise, which reads, No S R M. The Venn diagram of this syllogism now looks like this. The conclusion of this syllogism, which reads, No S R P, asserts that no members of S should be a member of P. But area 2 of the Venn diagram, which is also an area of S but P, is not shaded. Thus, the Venn diagram does not perfectly diagram the conclusion. Indeed, the conclusion is not self-evident. Therefore, the syllogism is invalid. That's it for now. Thanks for visiting us today for another whiteboard discussion here at Philo Notes. Full transcript of this video is available at philonotes.com. And to keep you updated of our newest videos, simply click here and subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. Thanks! Take care!